You may be surprised by a couple things today. First of all, why are we celebrating the dedication of a church today instead of the ordinary Sunday? And secondly, why is it St. John Lateran and not St. Peter's? And finally, why do our scripture readings seem to tell us not to celebrate the feast that we are celebrating? Well, I am going to try and answer all those questions because that's why I get the big bucks. <laughs> Today, we're celebrating the dedication of our Catholic world's cathedral, St. John Lateran. That basilica, and not St. Peter's, is really the Pope's cathedral, the cathedral of the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis. So it is our Catholic world's cathedral, just like the cathedral of Our Lady of Angels in downtown LA is the cathedral of our diocese, our cathedral. The original structure was the very first church built in the West after Constantine decreed that churches could be built. And it was dedicated on this day, November the 9th, 324 on land that was given by the Laterani family, and that's why the name St. John Lateran. In it, in the new construction, it, is, it says the mother of all churches. So for us, St. John Lateran is something like the temple was to the Jews. In fact, what Jesus has to say in John in the gospel about the temple brings out the point that I like to make today about this feast. In the gospel, Jesus is teaching us that all those life-giving benefits that people received from the temple, and that was symbolized in our first reading by those living waters that rushed out and gave such abundant growth to everything it touched, that all this would be replaced by Jesus himself. In the gospel, Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And John adds, he was speaking about the temple of his body. So what was a building would now be replaced by a person, Jesus Christ. Buildings then should not mean that much for us Christians. That's what St. Paul was implying in that second reading. He wrote, you are God's building. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? So now, besides the one Jesus Christ, who replaced the temple with himself, now we got all these other Christians running around as little temples of God. <clears throat> the early Christians understood this and showed it by the way that they worshiped. After they were driven from the temple, and especially after the temple was destroyed, then they were forget forbidden to worship in the synagogues Buildings didn't make that much difference to them. It wasn't, they weren't that important. They would worship in their homes for the Eucharist. And that went on for a long time until under the Emperor Constantine, they were first allowed to build churches. And one of the very first buildings in the West was this cathedral built in 324 uh, uh, that we're celebrating today, the Basilica of St. John Lateran. So if we follow the scriptures today and buildings are not that important, should we be celebrating this feast at all? If Jesus is the true temple and you and I are also temples in our own locations, are we not far more important than any buildings? Of course we are. But we also recognize that we need churches in which to worship and gather just as the Jews needed synagogues and the temple and early Christians needed homes and eventually churches. So the feast that we're celebrating today links us with Catholics all over the world as we celebrate together our own universal Catholic cathedral in Rome. And that's why it replaces the ordinary Sunday. But also, today's readings in scripture bring us back to essentials. And the essentials are Jesus Christ is our only true temple. And when we celebrate the Eucharist in temples or churches like this, he becomes our temple, our altar, our sacrifice, and our nourishment. And each one of us is a temple of God, made sacred by baptism and by God's presence within each one of us. 
and especially when we are refurbished, in a sense, in the Eucharist, when we receive communion, God comes to us. Sometimes that's easy to forget. Maybe this sanctuary lamp can recall the meaning of this feast for you and me today, because a sanctuary lamp is the light of God's presence. Paul reminded us that you and I are the new body of Christ. We are living temples where true worship should really take place. So we gather for Eucharist this morning in this little church or temple, but as temples of our own, little places of worship. Today's feast reminds us that each one of us could go around walking and carrying a sanctuary lamp like this. However, because of what happened in Rome in the, uh, about two weeks ago at the Synod of the Family, I think that this feast takes on special significance for families. We used to call families the little church because that's where we first learned the faith and how to practice it, especially how to pray. But the Synod of the, the Family coined a new term. It called the family the sanctuary of holiness the sanctuary of holiness. The family is where we first learn to be church. The family is where we first learn the faith, where we first learn to be loving and caring and forgiving, how to share and especially how to pray. In a word, how to be truly human. And that's what holiness really means, to be truly human. So what we might do today to celebrate this feast properly is to take a sanctuary lamp like this or a candle, take it home, light it, and keep it the way we did those lighted candles inside the Halloween pumpkins. Because in a sense it reminds us of the same thing, that it is the light inside of each one of us that makes us holy temples. And is especially the family that should be the sanctuary of that light, of such love and of such holiness. So you don't have to go to Rome to celebrate this feast, just go to home and be family to each other. May our Eucharist today help us to do that.